I first heard this narrative tracing the presence of Jesus throughout the scriptures when I was first a Christian. It's one of the reasons I absolutely love the Old Testament. It helped me put the Bible together and understand it as one story, the story of God and his people. More than that, it helped me place Christ right at the center of that story. Now, this story could be told in different ways. For example, I could say, in Genesis, Jesus is the word that spoke creation into being. And so as we watch this, you might find other words rising up for you. But what I want us to do is to celebrate the wonder that is the eternal presence of Jesus, our risen Lord and Saviour. In Genesis, Jesus is the ram at Abraham's altar. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. In Numbers, he's the cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. And in Deuteronomy, he's the city of our refuge. In Joshua, he's the scarlet thread out Rahab's window. In Judges, he is our judge. In Ruth, he is our kingsman redeemer. In 1 and 2 Samuel, he is our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra, he's our faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he's the rebuilder of everything that is broken. In Esther, he is the Mordecai sitting faithful at the gate. In Job, he's our redeemer that ever lives. In the Psalms, he is my shepherd and I shall not want. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he is our wisdom. In the Song of Songs, he is the beautiful bridegroom. In Isaiah, he is the suffering servant. In Jeremiah and Lamentations, it is Jesus that is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he is the wonderful four-faced man. And in Daniel, He's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Hosea, he is my love that is forever faithful. In Joel, he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. In Amos, he's our burden bearer. And in Obadiah, he is our savior. In Jonah, he is the great foreign missionary that takes the word of God into all of the world. In Micah, he is the messenger with beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is the avenger. In Habakkuk, he is the watchman who is ever praying for revival. In Zephaniah, he is the Lord mighty to save. In Haggai, he is the restorer of our lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is our fountain. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. In Matthew, he is the Christ, the son of the living God. In Mark, he is the miracle worker. In Luke, he is the son of man. And in John, he is the door by which every one of us must enter. In Acts, he is the shining light that appears to Saul on the road to Damascus. In Romans, he is our justifier. In 1 Corinthians, he's our resurrection. In 2 Corinthians, our sin bearer. In Galatians, he redeems us from the law. In Ephesians, he is our unsearchable riches. In Philippians, he supplies our every need. In Colossians, he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In 1 and 2 Thessalonians, he is our soon coming king. In 1 and 2 Timothy, he is the mediator between us and God. In Titus, he's our blessed hope. In Philemon, he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In Hebrews, he's the blood of the everlasting covenant. And in James, it is the Lord that heals the sick. 
In 1 and 2 Peter, he is the chief shepherd. In 1, 2 and 3 John, it is Jesus who has the tenderness of love. In Jude, he is the Lord coming with 10,000 saints. And in Revelation, lift up your eyes, church, for your redemption draws near. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ.